Hello, and welcome to Battery Hacker. In this video, we're going to talk about how to connect your solar panels in series or in parallel, and what actually changes when you do. Each wiring method has its own benefits and downsides, and understanding both will help you choose the right setup for your system. Let's start with the basics of how these two connections work. In a series connection, the negative terminal of one panel joins with the positive terminal of the next one, and that pattern continues down the line. When you wire panels this way, their voltage values add up, but the current remains the same. So, if one connection fails, the whole chain stops working, just like old-style string lights where one bad bulb can turn the whole set off. Now, in a parallel connection, Every positive wire is joined together, and every negative wire is joined together. All those wires usually meet in what's called a combiner box. Here, if one wire or one panel fails, the rest still keep working normally. That's one of the main advantages of parallel wiring. Now let's look a bit deeper into how series wiring actually works for solar panels. The rule is simple. Connect the negative terminal of the first panel to the positive terminal of the next one and continue that pattern through the entire string. This type of wiring increases the total voltage of your array, while the current stays the same. For example, if each panel is rated at 20 volts and 5 amps, three panels connected in series will produce 60 volts and 5 amps going into your charge controller. One advantage here is that higher voltage means thinner wire can be used since the current is lower, and lower current means less power loss in the cable. But you must also make sure that the total voltage of all panels combined stays below the maximum input limit of your charge controller. Most MPPT controllers can handle up to 100 volts, so always check that you don't exceed that limit. In short, series wiring keeps the current low, improves efficiency over long distances, and can help your system start charging earlier in the morning because of the higher voltage. However, if even one panel in the series stops producing power, maybe due to a broken connection or heavy shade, the whole string's output will drop. Now, let's talk about parallel wiring, which works in a slightly different way. In a parallel connection, all the positive terminals from each solar panel are tied together and all the negative terminals are tied together. These wires usually come together in a combiner box or sometimes through special MC4 branch connectors that make adding or removing panels much easier. When panels are wired in parallel, the voltage stays the same as one single panel, but the current adds up. So, using the same example, three panels rated at 20 volts and 5 amps each, when connected in parallel, you'll get an output of 20 volts and 15 amps going to the charge controller. The main benefit here is independence. If one panel has a problem or goes into shade, the others continue to generate power without affecting the rest of the system. But there are some downsides too. Because the total current is higher, you'll need thicker cables to safely carry that current, and your charge controller must be able to handle a higher input current. Controllers that can take higher current are generally more expensive. For systems using a PWM charge controller, parallel wiring is often preferred because those controllers have a lower voltage input limit compared to MPPT models. Just make sure to size your cables correctly. Standard wire thickness might not be enough when multiple panels are sending current through at the same time. Now you might think wiring in series is always the better option since it uses thinner cables and costs less. That's mostly true, but only if none of your panels ever get shaded. Here's why. When panels are in series, the current flowing through the entire string is limited by the weakest panel. So if one panel is partly shaded, it drags down the current for every panel in that chain. That's why connecting panels of different models or power ratings 
in the same series string is never a good idea. The lowest performing panel will pull the rest down with it. If you expect shading during any part of the day, it's usually better to go with parallel wiring or even a hybrid layout that mixes both methods. A hybrid or series parallel setup combines the benefits of both styles. Let's say you have four panels. You can connect two panels in series and then link those two pairs together in parallel. This gives you a balanced setup, decent voltage, moderate current, and better reliability in partial shade. This method is quite popular on boats, RVS, or rooftops, where some panels might face the sun differently or occasionally fall under shade. If shading is unpredictable, a hybrid system usually keeps power output more stable. Another thing to consider is performance in low sunlight, like early morning or late evening. A series connection tends to start charging earlier because higher total voltage helps the system reach the charge controller's minimum startup voltage sooner. In contrast, a parallel setup might need stronger sunlight before it begins sending power to the batteries. There's also the issue of voltage drop. When the distance between your panels and charge controller is long, a low voltage system like parallel loses more power along the cable. Hot temperatures also reduce voltage slightly, while cold weather keeps voltage higher. So in hot climates or long cable runs, wiring panels in series usually performs better, unless shading is a big concern. So how do you decide? It really depends on your shading conditions, wire distance, and type of charge controller. If you often deal with shade, or you're using a PWM charge controller, go with parallel wiring. If you have clear sunlight and an MPPT controller, series wiring will be more efficient. And if you want a mix of both worlds, or need to stay within voltage limits, build a hybrid series parallel system. Just remember, keep your total voltage under your controller's rated input limit, size your wires correctly, and you'll get the best out of your panels. Thanks for watching Battery Hacker. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more clear, practical solar insights.